Hello. In today's video, I'm going to explain how I use few techniques to bring measures into rows in a matrix. One of my friend asked if there is a way to create such a view, and that's the reason I created this dashboard for this demo. Building the entire mockup PBI took me approximately one hour, and I will try to explain this within 10 to 15 minutes max. So now let's quickly go to PBI, and I'll show you the data which I used in this dashboard. So here is the PBI file, and this is a demo dashboard which I created for this example. So if you notice here, this is a matrix. So this is a matrix. And if you notice here, I have the measure name in the rows, right? Ideally, when you try to drag and drop a measure, let's say I have a measure. If you try to drop it here, it doesn't work because it's a measure. So I use some techniques or tricks, I would say, to bring in, uh, to visually show it like a measure. So I'll explain you step-by-step step how I did this. Okay, so the first requirement was to have the measures in the rows here and all the values here. Okay, and also the requirement was to have the current week data, current week was the numbers and the previous four weeks numbers here and also the target for the current week and the trend. So whenever uh, the current week is greater than the previous week, it's uptrend and if it's vice versa, that's a downtrend. So first let's go to the data and look at the data used for this dashboard. So first let's go to the fact table. So in this fact table, I have the dates, which is in the date format and the business segment. We have uh, two segments, laptops and smartphones. Okay. And this is the numerator and the denominator to calculate uh, some of the measures uh, we need to divide this by numerator, numerator divided by denominator. And this is the week number. So this is a function here. So if you look here, week number is equal to week num fact date. So using the date, I was able to calculate the week number. Okay. This is my first data set. And if I open my second data set, that's goals. So I have the goals. So by business segment, the week number, if you notice here for the business segment laptops, uh, the, uh, the targets or the goals is same across all the month, all the weeks. And for smartphone, it's slightly different, but it's same across all the periods, okay? So this is my second data set. And, and third thing is I created the, so the, uh, once you import these two data, that's a fact and goals, Third thing is I created something called measure table, okay? So I use this uh, function, right? Called data tab table. And then you, if you have it in an Excel or in some uh, database, you can directly import it. But for this demo, what I did was I used the data table function and this is my measure name. That's my uh, column headers. And the data type is uh, the format. I, I, I did the format in as a string, okay? And if you notice here, I have the measures, okay? So this is my measure name, case volume. So I have it here, case volume and case logging percentage. This is my second measure name. It's a case logging percentage. And case volume and the format I want is uh, numerical or like uh, decimal points. But for case logging percentage, I want this to be a percentage format up to one decimal places. So this is how I created a temporary table or, or what's called, what I call as a measure table. So it's up to you if you want to, you can use this kind of uh, create a data table function and create a new table. So the people who doesn't know how to create a data table, I have a separate video on that. So you can just uh, click on this new table feature functionality and then uh, copy paste this measure, okay? So, so this is my uh, measure table. So once I created this uh, measure table, so what I did was I went back to my report here and then I, create, I, uh, I created my metric, okay? So if you notice here, I have this metric. So this is the only metric I used in this fact table. So to create a matrix, if I open this metric, you notice here, uh, I use the switch function. If 
this particular condition is true. Let's look what it does. So selected value function. So what it does, it will check what is selected. So measure table is my dummy table, which I created for the measures. Okay, so let me go back here. Is equal to case logging percentage. So it's gonna check. Okay, so the measure name is, is case logging percentage. Then this is my function numerator divided by denominator. Okay, and let me expand this further. Okay, so now the second, if this passes, it will stop here, okay. For the second measure, selected value, measure table, measure name is case volume. That's what you have it here. That's a case volume. It'll check. Is case volume. Then I just need the numerator part. And I did a distinct count of fact week number because I need the average, okay the four week average. So I, uh, I created this uh, one single measure, which uh, by using the selected value function, so it looks after what is selected. So it's gonna look what is in this particular row. And then based on that, it does a calculation. So now let's focus on the other things, like right? uh, the current week, previous week, targets, trend, etc. So how did I do that? So to, to do that, I use the external tools and we have something called tabular editor. So I have created a video on how to use this tabular editor, how to download and use this tabular editor. And also there is one more video on how to use a calculated group function. If you haven't watched it, please check out my previous videos. So click on this tabular editor. So when once you click on this tabular editor, it opens up a new window. Let's do that. So as you can see, it, I have a new uh, window open here. And if you look here, uh, if you expand this folder tables, so I have created a calculation group, okay? So with, for the people who doesn't know how to create a calculation group, I have created a separate video, please check out that. So click on this uh, particular tables and then you have an option called calculation group. So you can create a calculation group. And once you create this calculation group, you right click on this, you have an option called create calculation item. So create that calculation item. And then the, uh, this is my calculation calculation item. So the first calculation item is current week, okay? So what this particular function does, so I have a variable, I call it as current week, and it'll, it'll help me to get the latest week based on my data set. So I pass this to this variable. And then what I do is I apply a filter for the current week. So if you look here, I have used a selected measure function. So when I say selected measure, in my case, the selected measure is uh, the column name, or uh, the measure name is metrics, right? That's my measure name. So for that particular metrics, I apply the current week data, current week filter. So I pass this using the filter all selected function. So this will give me the current week, okay? And if you look here, the second calculated item I have is previous week. And again, what I do here is I created a variable called previous week. And using this particular function, I uh, pass the previous four weeks numbers uh, to this particular variable previous week. So I get the top four uh, records. And then once I have this information in this previous week, I pass on to <clears throat> this particular selected measure. So in, in our example, again, it's a metrics, that's my measure name. And I pass using this particular function, using a filter, and I pass this to my week number, okay? So that's the second step, what I do. And then I have one more thing that's called trend. So again, I want to compare uh, the current week with the previous week. And based on if, let's say the current week is more than my previous four weeks average, then it's an uptrend, right? So if it is current week is less than my previous four weeks, then it's a downtrend. So what I do here is I have used the switch function. And then if I scroll here, so I calculate my previous week 
and then subtract my current week from that and if uh, if my current week is more than my previous week then it basically i have used uh, emoji so you can uh, get this emoji in google i'm going to show you uh, the link where you can get these emojis okay and you paste this directly within quotes and then if it is a downtrend i i paste a emoji showing it as a downtrend okay so basically i get this trend using this particular functions and now i also want to get the targets okay so i uh, uh, i need to get the targets if you notice my data model here so if you notice my data model so i don't have any relationship between any of these tables so i have this in separate table called goals and using a function i'm able to retrieve it from this particular table so basically i've used a treat has function so i'm going to show you that one as well so now if i go to the targets here again i've used the switch function and if you notice here i have used selected value so basically measure table is my table which has all my measure name if this particular value is selected equal to case logging then what i do is i use the calculate function since uh, my weekly uh, goals are same right for each week so i use the max function and then once i pass this what i do is i use a treat as function to pass my filters from the table the fact table to my goals table so that's what i do basically i summarize my fact table based on my business segment week number so i summarize it and then the data i pass on to my the goals table so you can see the goals business segment and goals week number so that's what i do here okay so if if it is case logging i have the goals but for the other measure where i don't have the goals right uh, with the case volume i do not have any goals so what i do i show it as any so this is my target that's how i calculate my target so once i create all these measures i have one important thing okay so if you notice here my first measure that is case logging percentage that's a percentage and the second measure that's a case volume it's actually a numerical old number right so what i have done under the current week if i drop this here format string expression i used a different format here right based on if selected value okay measure table measure format so based on my format which i have selected right in my table i am formatting my string according to that format so that's what i do so similarly for previous week also if i do a drop down format string expression so from the selected measure table i am using the measured format so if i go back to my table here you can see the formats so you can see one is numerical and percentage so that's what i do so once i created all these uh, uh, calculated items in my calculated group so the next task is pretty simple save this one and go back to your report here and then if i select my metrics here so i have the measure name coming from measure table which is into the rows and the business segment is coming from this table the fact table and the name it's coming from my calculated group so if you look here my calculated group i have brought this to the columns and the metric i have placed under the values so by doing this i am able to achieve this particular view i know this is a little tricky but i think uh, uh, if you practice a bit i think it should be fairly simple as well so only challenging part here is uh, creating a calculator item and bringing the goals into the right format and to the right values for that particular selected measures i hope this video was helpful and if you have any questions please drop me a note in the comment section 
and if you have anything uh, something like challenging scenarios uh, please drop me a note so that uh, i can see if it's interesting i can create your create a video on that particular topic okay and thanks for watching and please don't forget to share with your friends or colleagues and have a great day